Hello and welcome to Sports Update on TVC Breakfast Hour today. This weekend is packed with all the intrigues that would keep you glued with a touch of greatness on your favorite clubs. And of course, we have every reason to tell you that uh, the Euro qualifiers is exactly what is happening right now. But uh, I am not alone. Any drive, any twist, what will be happening at the qualifiers? Um, not really, except we see any upsets. Uh, so far, so good. Spain were able to thrash um, Georgia by seven goals to one. <laughs> Croatia did the needful five goals to nil against Latvia. Um, Turkey had a little stumble drawing against Armenia. It was uncalled for, but it did happen. But um, every other side did everything they needed to do. And we'll still see more uh, much later this afternoon as well. All right, uh, Dr. Freak, uh, any surprises from your end too? Um, nothing at all, except, like she said, an upset. Uh, Portugal survived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said survived because I expected more. Yeah, true, and true. I, I think Portugal has been a bit inconsistent, same as um, Spain. Mm. You know, but um, France, England, I know those guys, are, yeah. they, they, they are my top teams for next year, alongside the hosts, Germany. So I think those are my three top. Top teams? Yeah. Presently? Yeah. All right, well, let's uh, quickly, uh, we know that the, the qualifier so far has, uh, you know, been quite intense. And as usual, you have, uh, you know, the players doing what they have to do. But yeah. uh, we cannot take away our lenses from the African qualifiers that is obviously on our... Uh, you know, on our tables uh, today, and we understand that on Sunday, the Super Eagles will be squaring out with uh, South Home. So, uh, do you think, uh, so far, how would you rate uh, what's going on with the Super Eagles with the new influx coming in and uh, aiding what's going to be happening? Um, just like you said, for the Afghan qualifiers in general, uh, we have some teams where these rounds would be like um, a formality. Most of them have qualified, and they, are, they already know that they'll be moving on to the next one. For Nigeria, it's also the same thing with South America and Principe. It's just like a formality game. They just have to, that's why they have the luxury of bringing in new faces, right. you know, to just freshen up the legs and see how they can also gel and um, integrate themselves in the Super Eagles. All right, uh, Dr. Freak. Uh, uh, Pacero obviously has been a very, very uh, a manager that's come into question with his performance yeah. so far. Talking about his stats, nine matches so far, won four, drew uh, none, and lost five. His uh, winning rate is 44.4%. Do you think this man? is actually the man that can actually take us to that level we're looking for. Uh, so I think he's just filling the gap for now. That's <laughs> an honest opinion. I, I do not think he's excellent enough as a coach to take the Super Eagles to the height that we desire. And 44.4% is, is a failure for me. Right. In fact, in any school, that's, that's a D, you know. And the kind of matches we lose, it's, it's very obvious that there are technical glitches. There are times that, can this man just effect a change, just act like a coach, and he's just there like, I'm also watching. You can be a spectator when you're supposed to drive the team. And whatever we want to blame players for, like a physical attitude, indiscipline, it, 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 it rests on the coach to do something about it. You know? All right, all right. Quickly, uh, let's uh, take you through some highlights of... Uh the AFCON games, and of course the Super Eagles are squaring it up but with a pass game with Sartoimis. So when we come back, obviously we have so much to talk about. Remember, the UFC is still on the front burner. Stay tuned right here. The Super Eagles of Nigeria are taking their final round of AFCON qualifiers seriously, following intense training at the practice pitch of the Gospel Akbabio International Stadium. Earlier, at the team's camp, some key players were optimistic of a fine outing on Sunday. We are, we are really serious about this game. and um, We beat them 10-0 in Morocco and of course they will go back to look at their mistakes and, uh, and check one or two things and bring in uh, new players also, which we don't know anything about. So this game is as important as every other game, just like the one we played against um, Syria alone. So we are ready, the team is ready, we we'll give our all to make sure we, we win this game and end the qualifying in, on high note. It's a must win for us, we're going to take the game serious. Because we have to keep uh, winning the games uh, we have at hand at this moment. I can remember the last time we won uh, a home game in Nigeria. So I think uh, winning this game will, will bring our fans a little bit closer to us because I think they are far away from us this time around. Um, beating Satome here in Ujo, I think, it will give us privilege to focus in qualifying for the uh, World Cup also. George Finidi even goes beyond the Sunday's clash into believing that Nigeria can go one better by winning their fourth AFCON title in Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah, every, every, every country wants to win the AFCON before the AFCON, you know. Um, but when you get there, 
Um, it, it all depends how you start the tournament. If you start well and um, the confidence builds up, uh, that will take you even even further. You know, so um, our aim is to win it. Um, but yeah, you never know what can happen. You know, so we will go there uh, with the mentality, with the mindset to win it. The first uh, mission for the Afcon is to win it. Nigeria have already qualified for the tournament with 12 points from five games. Still, if they slip up against Saltum, they could be toppled at the summit by Guinea-Bissau, who take on Sierra Leone in their final fixture. Joseph Kunde, TVC News, Uyo. Welcome back. Of course, uh, we have uh, the fixtures right there on your screen. Malawi against Guinea, Mozambique against Benin. Of course, we have Ivory Coast going out against Lesotho. And of course, Comoros against Zambia, DR Congo, Sudan, Mauritania, Gabon, Morocco, Liberia, and of course, Senegal and Rwanda. Interesting <laughs> matchups. Interesting matchups. Yeah. Now, I know that uh, Sadio Mani, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him play, actually. Mm, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Senegal already top in the group. And they look like they will just field players that have not really had so many caps um, mm. under their belts lately. So it's just going to be fresh legs, you know, trying out them, their locks outside. outside. Well, I, I don't think we, we expect anything different from what will be coming on uh, against uh, Sao Tome on Sunday. I don't think we should expect anything less than a victory. I would have called the first leg a 10 go 3 Labet. It was one-sided, so mm. it wasn't <laughs> yeah. split. Yeah, so, so I think... On the neutral just, ground, too. <laughs> yeah, on their home ground. So <laughs> right here, um, they're just going to receive good measure press down shaking together. Mm. So... All right, well, as we keep uh, cruising on the show, uh, we are not leaving you out. We have some expectations on the streets, and Mike Mexicano is at a newspaper stand, and fans are already there, are ready to actually pour out their minds and tell you what will be happening on Sunday when the Super Eagles square out. Stay tuned for that. Hello, Mike, how are you? Hello, Mark. How are you doing? Good morning. <laughs> it's good to have you on the streets one more time. Now, quickly, uh, what are the expectations of the fans around you there? Uh, let's get to understand what's going on. So, over to you now, quickly. All right, definitely. It's a bright and sunny Saturday morning. Welcome to At The Stance on TVC Breakfast Saturday. And of course, it's all about Nigeria at the AFCON qualifying. We are up against Sao Tome and Principe tomorrow at the Gospel Akpabio International Stadium in Uyo. And I'm here at the stance. I'm here with Ifani, of course. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, some headlines that we have here on Vanguard Sports here. We have here NFF Wasteful. And when I looked inside, uh, the, the, the report talks about how NFF is expected to invite home-based players rather than uh, prosecute this match with foreign-based players. If I, what do you think? Do you think that we should have invited more home-based players to prosecute this particular match rather than inviting foreign-based players? Well, for me, for me, it's a good, good, good morning, Nigerian people. So for, for me, for me, saying about uh, this uh, Nigerian, uh, Nigerian qualifier, mm. I hope I, I, I hope Nigeria can na, na, Nigeria should just put on on home base home base player mm. because due to due to the way, due to the way the boys are playing in Europe, they don't play they don't play to their own determination. They they go there for money. They don't play. So if they come Nigeria to come and play play Nigerian football, they they play the way they, they, they the way they feel like to play. Mm. So they don't put they don't put that body that motion in that in that, in that game to make Nigeria the Bro, people of the Nigeria yes to people are yes. Stephen is also here with me. Stephen, do you agree with him that we should have invited more home based players rather than foreign based players for the match against Saudi? As for me, it's not advisable to invite the home based player mm. because let them finish what they started. Let them know that this thing they have started it and if they fumble, they fumble. Mm. Because by you inviting home base player, just like you are gambling. And at the end of the day, they now fumble. Who are you to blame them? The best thing let us keep to them and let them restore the zeal, the love, the passion that we have for the Super Eagle right. and, and and for the national team. All right. All right. So the last time we played Sao Tome in uh, on a neutral ground, we beat them 10-0. So that's the reason why they said that we should put more 
uh, home base. But we have a number of players. We have Taiwan Oni, we have Gift Oba, and these are players that are on the fringes of the, of, the, of the national team. So now, do you think that these other players, even though they are foreign base now, should Osimen start? Now, that's the question. We beat, we beat this with 10 nil at a neutral ground now. So should the players, should we allow those other players that have not played so much, those other ones on the game, Gift Oba and uh, Taiwan Oni, should they start instead of Victor Osimen in this match? Well, uh, Osime, well, I, well, at least they, you should start Osime. You think we should start Osime? What if he gets injured? If he gets injured, uh, where the, the, the club, we take, uh, the club, the, the club where, where, where he's playing from, we take, we take, care, we of take care of him. Eh? Yes. Yeah, like we spoke about it here, on the Guardian Sports, which I have here, on the Guardian Sports, which I have here, uh, Super Eagles will overcome Sao Tome's Falcons and uh, Okmala Falls' absence of home-based players. That's what we're talking about here. That's what we have basically on all the pages of the papers here. That, but what are your expectations? We are up against them. We are home. We beat them 10 nil the last time. How do you think the match tomorrow will go? The match tomorrow, for me, beating them 10 doesn't mean that you will not come back again and beat them 20 nil. Because somebody that you nearly kill and you now come back for you again, yeah. know that it's coming for a reverse mission. Mm. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Falcons of uh, Sao Tome, all their players are foreign base. All. For the first time. So they say they are preparing for 2026 World Cup qualifiers. Yeah. So this time around, that match is not going to be easy. What do you think? What will happen? You think we're going to beat them as high as 10 like we did the last time? No, it, 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 it's impossible. Mm. Okay. Is right. it, it's impossible because now they have foreign base. So most of most of the players they, they go out now they, they go out now to play professionals. So it it, 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 it it can be easy for Nigeria to beat them that that is him. Even 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 though even though even though if it is not up to that that uh, uh, goal they give them, it, it can be possible. All right, that's the size of what we have at the stands here. You can see the heat here. People are talking about it. You can see all of them here. We've been talking about the Super Eagles and the match against South Tome and Principe. I can feel the heat. That's why I'm sweating. It's a hot Saturday morning. But hey, come on. We expect that tomorrow the Super Eagles will be hotter and make us proud at the, of course, uh, Uyo, the Gospel of Pabio International Stadium in Uyo. Now, that's what I have on the stand. Mark, take over. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mike Mesekel. A fantastic uh, drill there from the fans on the streets talking about what exactly might be going down tomorrow against uh, Satoru. Now, quickly.